Yesterday, I encountered a psychopath. This did not disturb me because over the past three years, but particularly the past two years, I've become a lot more acquainted with how psychopaths work. I've become aware that there is an agenda in the mainstream to suppress the knowledge of psychopaths. This, to an extent, ties into the 1988 film by John Carpenter, They Live. Uh, they Live is an unfortunate text because it could be better. If it was better, it would be more credible. It would have made its message uh, more widespread than it already is. Roddy Piper played the main role in They Live. He's dead now, uh, alas. And Piper said They Live is not a movie, it's a documentary. And David Icke is right. I rephrased that. They Live is not science fiction, it's a documentary. Because it was a movie, obviously. I think what Piper meant was we shouldn't see it as fictitious. No, it's not fictitious. But the metaphor, the primary metaphor of They Live is that we are infected by psychopaths. Um, Had I known that when I was a child and a teenager, it would have very much changed my life. And I regret it, but it's not my fault because it was hidden information. I have come round to the conclusion, particularly in 2020 and more now than ever, that it is deliberately hidden. One of the things that they observe and they live is that the main character, who's never given a name, is what's called a seer, S-E-E-R. He's able to see through these things. Once you acquire the black glasses, once you've taken the red pill, you never go back. Moreover, you don't want to. This is something that we're not told. We're still reading things online from people who are going through a continuum of realisation here in which they're saying, you know, would you take the blue pill would you go back and some people are saying I'm terribly depressed I went through that continuum myself so I know what they've been through here no not this stage no no would I consider backpedaling anything and anything at this stage anyway I encountered a psychopath yesterday I knew what I was dealing with I'm not going to give too much description of what happened you don't want as Thomas Sheridan correctly says you don't want to let energy vampires feed on you correct but I was so wound up and I suppose adrenalized I was so full of adrenaline when I came away from the thing I went straight into the gym in our home and I did nearly two hours of heavy lifting so at least it gets you to sleep because nothing gets you to sleep like heavy lifting it's the best sleeping pill and antidepressant of all that's what Henry Rollins says and he's right So I hit the gym hard yesterday afterwards. Um, I'm going to hit it again hard today. Um, I love it. It's been a saviour to me during the lockdown. I'm very, very lucky. What happened initially with the psychopath was that I challenged it. I'm not using him or her. They don't deserve that. They're not human. I challenged it over something it was doing. It got fresh and cheeky with me. But I said, no, this is the situation. So because there was others watching, the psychopath backed down, but then started taking the piss and started, you know, he pranced around and was acting like he was a good boy. He was trying to skip a queue. And then standing behind me in the queue, the psychopath did that real thing of enlisting others. Said, you know, it's nice to be nice. And led a woman behind him into talk to say behind it into saying this kind of thing. Then I heard what goes around comes around. I turned around and I said, "You wanted to skip the queue, skip." I said, "Go ahead of me." I said, "If it means that much, you go ahead of me." Oh no, I'm standing here. No, I said, "You wanted to skip the queue, skip." Go ahead. I said, "It means that much to you to skip the queue." I said, "Because uh, I'm hearing what's going on behind me here." I said, "And I'm quite happy to facilitate you in this instance." No, no, I'm not doing that. No, no, no. You want to go ahead of the queue. No, I said you were the one who wanted to skip. So I said, go ahead. Then my position in the queue came. I said to the person who was in charge, I said, this person's going ahead of me. No, I'm not. He said, I said, he's wasting time. Oh, no, no, no. So I went ahead then and I joined one queue. And then this entity went and joined the queue next to me. And I said to the cashier, you know, I said, he tried to skip the queue. I said, and then he becomes a comedian. He said, I'll skip in your head if you don't shut up. Right, I said. So I went over and f- and got into his space. I said, you're going to skip in my head, are you? Now, get out of my face, you lunatic. I said, a moment ago, you were heard by the staff here saying that you're going to skip in my head. I said, you're going to skip in my head, are you? Let's see how big you are. 
I said, and here's what I said, you can take the first punch here. You can take the first move. I'm not going to lay a finger on you, but I, I got into its space and pushed it out of its queue. I said, now let's see how big you are. I said, come on. He said, you're a lunatic. I said, a moment ago, you were heard by the staff here threatening me and saying that you were going to skip in my head. Go for it, I said. Let's go for that one now. He said, you're going to fight me. I said, I'm not going to throw the first punch here. I said, but I can assure you that I'll throw the last. Oh, he said, you're mad. You're a lunatic. He said, get out of my face. You're standing in my body space here. That's okay. I said, that's fine. I wasn't wearing a mask, so there was obvious consequences to that. As well as proving to that thing why this mask on its face was not particularly effective. <clears throat> but, you know, I said, now you're a hard man. I said, first of all, you skip the queue. Secondly, you're then an attempt, you make an attempt at being a comedian, which failed. And thirdly, now you're attempting to be a hard man. And that's failing as well. A member of staff came over to me and said, ah, Chris, let it go. Okay, I said. Once a member of staff intervenes, you have to respect them. They're under enough stress anyway. So I backed off and he started saying, you're a fucking lunatic. You're there. I turned back to him. I said, now, I, and the member of staff then said to him, shut up. And said to me, go back to your queue, Chris, please. Okay, sorry, I said. Now, it occurred to me very quickly that they knew this individual. Because he, that thing got no sympathy. But when, you see, and Thomas talks about this, that when he stepped over the line by threatening me, that was when he lost. Because up to that point, you know, people were inclined to give it a bit of a fool's pardon. And say, oh, well, what are you getting yourself so worked up over and all the rest of it? I'll skip in your head. I know, sorry, nobody threatens me. And I'm deadly serious about that. Nobody threatens me. Um, whether I had done the gym or not, whether I've worked on boxing tra tech training for f three or four years, whether I've beefed up with red meat and all of this, whether I've stopped alcohol or not, if I was a seven stone weakling and 15 years old, I'd still stand up to anybody who spoke to me that way. Because you just have to find the inner Mrs. Carmody. But I'm sure Mrs. Carmody has now infected my soul totally anyway. So, you know, I'm not afraid of things that occur to me like that. But it is also important not to give too much description here and not to credit that entity with more than it very, very basically deserves. And you have to be basic about it. You have to be extremely basic about it. And it's sparing because you don't give them energy. You don't give them credit. Three years ago, I'm not sure I would have been ready for what I was ready for yesterday. And that's not to do with getting bigger and doing boxing training. It's about the space that your head is in. I very much owe Thomas Sheridan an awful lot for that. It was Thomas in his books, Puzzling People. And his other book, Defeated Demons. Lovely term, Defeated Demons, which gave me that very valuable insight that I had yesterday. I owe Thomas so much for that. I bought the two books on Amazon or Kindle. Or sorry, on Kindle, so I can read them on my iPhone. I use the Kindle on my iPhone quite a lot, but I also bought the hard copy books as well. I recommend them. I recommend those two books very strongly. They're not actually opening any new territory that hasn't been scientifically analysed since before the Second World War. There have been a lot of academic, very rigorous and substantial academic studies of psychopathology, but Thomas took it into the mainstream and put it in colloquial terms in those books. They're readable, they're approachable, they're relatable. It is a defeated demon. I defeated that demon yesterday because there was nowhere left to go. Once the threats of violence started, nobody's going to support that. Nobody is going to give that an iota of support. So um, it was that insight that I would got from those two books. But I suppose particularly defeated demons that allowed me to, to know how to respond in the situation I was in. There was gaslighting. There was unctuous behaviour to others. There was an attempt to drag others into the energy field that this entity possessed, a very dark entity field, a very dark energy field. There's the need on my part not to be frightened, which I wasn't. And also, but moreover, the need not the need to stay calm. In other words, not to get angry. How can you get angry with the psychopath? It's not human. It's like getting angry with a pig. A pig must be let grunt. The wind must be let blow. Dogs must be let bark. Sewage must be let have its smell. And the same with these psychopaths. They have to be accepted for what they are. That doesn't mean, though, that you let them into your own head or let them into your own space. You don't. You don't. But you will encounter them. And I had the black glasses on yesterday. Seriously. I had the black glasses on yesterday. 
like from the metaphor in they live i saw what i was up against yesterday it may seem trivial skipping a queue it's not trivial particularly in this day and age but for moreover if somebody is skipping a queue and it's trivial to them that's oh i'm terribly sorry i've skipped queues many times without you know accidentally i've said oh god i'm terribly sorry i always apologize i always get to the back of the queue you know i don't want to skip queues in front of anyone this individual who seemed to be of a chronological possession of about 60 years by the looks of it um argued with me in the first instance no don't argue with me i said read the sign oh don't get your knickers in a twist gaslighting gaslighting i said nothing and i was willing to say nothing and let it go but the harassment going on behind me oh it's nice to be nice and you know uh what goes around comes around that was a threat now it wasn't as much as the threat that came later i'll skip in your head but that was a threat so i turned around then to it and i said go ahead i said you want to skip the queue skip go on again it's what we talk about uh, letting the psychopath think they've won letting the psychopath think they've won um in their own funny way, these things are actually more immune to cults than the norm- the NPCs and the normies. The normies are really having it hard now. They're really, really having it hard now. I don't have that much sympathy. The evidence is out there for them. The evidence has been there for at least five years. At least five years. I spotted it when Fine Gael took office. I spotted it ten days after Fine Gael took office in 2011. I said, these people have an agenda. They have an agenda here. So far, they have won and lost at their agenda, but they have an agenda, my goodness, they have. Um, But that's my story. I spotted a psychopath. I saw it immediately. I saw all the signs. Uh, I dealt with it. Nobody sympathised. Because in that particular commercial entity that I go into, that business that I go into, I know all the staff there. I'm an anti-masker. I've made it clear to them all that I'm not wearing the mask, but I did it courteously. I saw a video actually last night from an electronic shop in uh, Carlo. I downloaded the video. I always download these things. I have very, very high memory on my computer. I can do all that kind of thing. I downloaded the video of it, and it's an interesting video of a man who gets into trouble with the Gardaí at an electronic household goods shop in Carlo, I think. It's hard to actually locate it. Uh, in the first instance from the video but he's talking about common law oh no no he's talking about all of these things in in, this is how people talk themselves out of victory you know um and i'm wondering why that hasn't happened to me honest to god i'm wondering well i you know i know why it's because i've gone about it correctly and i don't look for trouble that's your answer why is this kind of crap not happened to me easy You know, I've made it clear to the shops that I'm not going to wear a mask. I have not actually been refused service once at any shop for not wearing a mask. On one occasion at the chemist's, I was told to wait outside, which I did. Actually, they shouldn't have done that because chemists are exempt even from the statutory instrument that uh, I think it's 256 off the top of my head, 2020, 256. The statutory instrument that pertains to masks. Uh, I should do a more substantial and uh, legally watertight video about masks. There's a lot of stuff circulating in the moment at the moment about masks. There's a lot of rubbish circulating at the moment in Ireland about masks. There's a lot of faux legal advice circulating at the moment about masks. Uh, I'll say this. The statutory instrument brought in in 2020 pertaining to masks does not impose a burden of proof upon the non-mask wearer. So if you say I have an exemption for particularly section 5.12 difficulty breathing and extreme distress it doesn't say that you have to have medical certification so the guards in that video in carlo were wrong to say where's your medical cert no they shouldn't have been asking for that and the shop isn't is not entitled to ask for that on the other hand the shop is entitled to refuse service and is entitled to refuse admission and they are actually entitled to do that don't worry about that when they are entitled so we need to be firmer with people about exactly where your legal position on this is uh don't talk about the common law please please don't talk about the common law please give give that a rest the common law thing doesn't work it doesn't even exist in the terms that so many of these lulas come out with and this is where you where they talk themselves into defeat this is where they talk themselves into defeat 
I went into an ele- it's actually a very similar shop in Dublin just before Christmas I need to get a telly for mum um I then was so impressed with the shop Power City and Coolock there they're getting the plug um that I bought a few mo- I bought two or three other devices from them later I bought some heaters for the house really good heaters I bought a monitor for my computer after the monitor decided to give up and this the old I was using a TV set then I got a really good high definition computer monitor and it's like when people get that operation you know the laser operation for their eyes and they say oh so this is what it looked like all along so I got this new monitor for my PC it's brilliant it's fab the new monitor for my PC you know particularly for doing court hearings where you can see everybody so well now it's bigger than my TV was you know interestingly since the latter half of 2020 i've been triggering electronics left right and center i've been making light bulbs blow electrics blow old appliances in the house all blew up in one section they all blew up in five minutes one day we still don't know why maybe thomas can lend some insight into that all the electrics are going ass ways at the moment let thomas know that one anyway getting back to the um, point what we're encountering at the moment is a psychopathic feed at a national and international level. What we're seeing in Congress where that Gowell Pelosi is trying to get Trump impeached. You know, the, it won't even begin until the 19th of January and he takes he leaves office in five days. So don't, you know, don't know where this is supposed to lead. That is a psychopathic feed that we're witnessing in Congress. You know, but sure, look, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. It's like Europe in 1940 when people thought Hitler was going to lay waste to the place. He did. He laid waste to the place, but ultimately he, got, he laid waste to himself. We will win. We will beat them, you know. Um, I was always very serious about the masks. And I suspect that seriousness took a Jungian character in me because nobody has given me any trouble about it, except from one crank who called the guards when I was in the supermarket. <laughs> they escorted them off the premises. The coppers came down. They knew me anyway. They knew me anyway. The coppers, I'd spoken to them before. They said, how are you getting on with not wearing a mask? They weren't even apprehending me. They were curious. How, you know, how's this rolling for you? I said, it's fine. I said, I've written to all the places by email. said, I'm not going to wear a mask. How do they respond? The guards asked. I said, I said, that's fine. So when they came down to the supermarket, I was attending a supermarket where I'd already got formal permission from the branch manager not to wear a mask. So, you know, the staff said, there's no issue here to the, when the coppers came down. So the copper said to your man, there's no complaint. Me. I'm making a complaint. We're not listening. They said, you don't have the right to make a complaint. You know, this person is exempt. He's not exempt. He is exempt. But I am actually seeking a doctor's cert in relation to exemption. I have gingivitis. You know, I have very hot breath. There is bacteria on my breath at the moment. And what I saw, I actually looked it up. The effects of mask wearing on gingivitis sufferers. Um, that's what's causing a lot of the acne. That's what's causing a lot of the, the eczema to people who are wearing masks. So my instinct about not wearing a mask, who I decided the principle of it was actually right. You know, I'm right not to wear a mask if I have gingivitis. I'm trying to get rid of it. I, mani- I manage the gingivitis kind of like a controlled, it's a controlled chronic thing. But I'm going to have to get tough about it because I need to get my teeth crowned this year, 2021. There can't be any gum disease. There can't be any bacteria, any excess of that in your mouth. They won't put the crowns in on top of it. All the cavities have gone. I don't have any cavities. They were all filled in November of this year. I ended up looking like Quasimodo for six weeks. I still have sensitive teeth, but the dentist said that'll last for a long time because it was a profound work I had done on my teeth. But all the rot, all the decay is gone, but the gingivitis is still there. It needs to be dealt with. But until it is dealt with, that is a substantial and credible medical reason not to wear a mask. Now, it actually isn't... <clears throat> I think looking at statutory instrument, it isn't qualified in there, but I would qualify it under difficulty breathing. So seriously, I'm not wearing a mask uh, on principle, but also medically. And I'm actually in the process now of getting a cert from my GP, you know, to medically uh, disqualify me from having to wear a mask. But anyway, um, yeah. So this is where we're at now. And 
you know, the psychopaths are coming out. They're using the stress that people are under regarding COVID-19 and regarding the scam that's going on in supermarkets and places like that. And they're feeding on it. But once you know what they are, once you have the black glasses on, you can see them for what they are. I wouldn't have had that three years ago. I have it now and I'll be eternally thankful.